Okay, guys, this is the clubhouse. It's a little game, a bit of gameplay I captured. This is the... I didn't get the very beginning of this game, but it's very early on. This is a... Uh, this is right after they released Cons of Tarkir. So this is a Narset Enlightened Master deck I'm playing against. And he just does way too much ramping. Way too much ramping. And I'm not really sure what his plan was here. Um, but I got out... Uh, Intruder Alarm, which means I'm usually always going to have blockers up. <coughs> but he got it. Oh. Uh, up one blocker, but I, I don't know if he is aware of what Inganesca usually is. Creature heavy, so it doesn't really do much to stop me. So anyway, I just hope you enjoy this. There's a couple of games here. So there's several games. Some of them are a little longer. This one's pretty short. Um, but it does get to to showcase this this uh, game right here, which isn't very exciting, uh, but it does kind of showcase what this deck can do. Um, a couple of other ones are uh, interesting with regard to Holebreaker Horror, who's also a part of here. Dude, and there will be a this guy has got mana dorks like you would not believe, man. And how much say ramp? But anyway. Uh, there will be a deck Dude. list at the end of this video. Just hang around at the very end if you'd like to see that. I hope you guys like it. Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna go. Hmm. Just to get him. Mana. Okay, there we go. Exactly. here, man. There we go. There we go.
me to draw that card.
they feel you've left them behind. Now, for most of us, looking at those salaries, the average person on the street, let's face it, guys. Would you take that salary and work there? Of course you would. So would I. Cynthia Williams, 6.5 million? Yeah, I can do that job. I'll figure it out. That's what most of us think. But the other part of you guys, just say, fire them. Hire somebody else. You fired the wrong person. Chris Cox shouldn't be the CEO. He got in because COVID was there. And everything was ramping up and getting all crazy. And it looked good on the books. And it was because of him that Magic was doing so well. So they elevated him to the CEO position, right? That's how a lot of people feel he got there. How about uh, Cynthia Williams? Most people that old earnings call chat where she talked about Wizards of the Coast and, and kind of read from a Wikipedia page. It didn't look good. I, I agree. I'd like to see her talk too. I don't like how she's handling things as a player, as a person looking at it from the outside. In my opinion, she's got to go. How many jobs would that save on where you got a younger, hungrier person with new ideas into those positions that cost one-tenth as much? Because if you look up what an average CEO of this company size makes, it says that's what they make. That's the average. Okay? That's the average. But is that a U.S. average for people working? Is that a, is that a convenience store guy's in salary? I don't think so. Is that the local dry cleaner salary? How about the taxi cab drivers? You make a nine um. The average doesn't mean anything to the person looking up and seeing that, and now they're losing their job. I told you optics can be everything. I don't think that that they handled this well. I, I, I don't think when they put that press release together, I think they should have made a little more of a statement than just saying stronger headwinds than we expected. And we're going to have to let these people go because we know they've been slimming it down since last year. Yeah. It's called. They've been clearing warehouse yeah. room. They've been cutting back on some of the productions. They don't have as much stuff Three, sitting on the shelves. Four, they've been ramping five. down. They knew they were doing it. Yes, the job cuts are the last thing. And I'm not saying all these job cuts aren't necessary. Some of them are probably very necessary. If you're not putting out 100,000 board games and you need 100 employees to do it, you're only putting out... A quarter of that, yes, you need less employees. I get that. But I hope they are making that pain shared across the board. Either I hope they're not keeping it like bureaucracy heavy at the top. Because I don't think the average convenience store person wants to pay more for magic knowing that they cut the workforce, slipped down their product lines, did everything they could to make more profits for the company, and then you still charge me more money. How does that direction. feel as a magic player? They done all these cost-cutting measures, and they threw people out of their jobs, so they could keep their keep their stock options and make magic more expensive. Go. Because that's how we view it as players. That's how we view it from the outside, looking down on them in their ivory tower. That's how we look at it. That's how I look at it. In my opinion, that's how I see things. And as a lower middle management person, if you don't make it known that you share the pain of the people around you. If you don't let them know that you are not above what they're going through, the optics are never good. It never sells well for the boys. <laughs> well, or did, were you trying to bluff me or something? I don't get it. You're right. You don't have to care at how they look at you, Chris, or Cynthia. You were going to gain a lot of life, but you're going to lose a lot of life. may not work as hard for you. They may make more mistakes. They may put in less time and effort because they Wait, one more. like you don't care. There's a real difference there. Optics can be everything. And going forward, the workforce that does make it through these cuts, the ones that are left, never seen this and depending on where they are and which departments they get let go from, you could see a whole changeover of the attitudes of those employees. Especially if some of their best friends oh, yeah, can let go and can't find new jobs. I actually and have. sleeping on their couch. Like, it can go a really long way because you don't know and I don't know, honestly, how it's all being handled. We have no clue. This is pie in the sky, but I can only talk from personal experience. I am that person who hires people. I am that person who lives in the middle. And I know the optics. I know how it is. And if you're not willing to understand what's going on with your employees, if you're not willing to say, yeah, they're my coworkers too. Like, these are people who I rely on. 
and who make me look good to the upper management because they work hard for me. As soon as you think you're above that, you've already lost. And that's the problem we're seeing with big companies like this. I'm not that big guy. You're not that big guy probably where you are right now watching this video. But the optics we see are probably the same or pretty close to it. I see expensive magic products. I see product lines getting cut and slimmed down. I see rising prices across the board and all kinds of even board games I remember. And yeah, inflation hits us all. And you still got your stock options and bonuses. And you gotta increase this. It just doesn't look good. Either way, I wanna know what you guys think. I want your opinions on this. I want you guys to slam the comments down. Do you think they did it right? Could they have done a little bit better? What would you switch up? And would you fire Chris? Would you fire Cynthia? I got it. Put those comments in the comment section. Thanks again for stopping by the channel. Thank you for waiting for me to put this video out. I had another video, as you guys know, yesterday, but it was already in the books. I've already got things ready. And when this announcement stuff came out, it took me a while to gather and read everything to make a, a video I thought that was worthy of putting out. So thanks again for sticking by and for those people's emails. I hope you guys enjoyed my opinion on this. I look forward to seeing you guys later. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you tomorrow for another video. Hey guys, a big shout out and thank you. My fantastic patrons, my supporters on this channel, to my YouTube membership members. Those patrons, you guys, you make these videos possible every day. Thanks again for that support. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Well, well, you're here at the end of the Ramble Jam. You made it. You're that 1% who make it all the way through. Thanks a lot for being here, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. You're a crazy man. Yeah, I mean, I'm out of coffee, I'll be honest. By the way, somebody asked me why I always use the same coffee mug, especially since I don't work at talk radio. Um, but here, here it is, guys. This coffee mug is not broken. I'm not going to waste money buying new coffee mugs just because they look pretty. It's a functional coffee mug. I'm going to keep using this coffee mug. And that way I don't need another one. Too many times we buy knickknacks and stuff we don't really need, you know? You realize that sometimes. Now, back to this Chris Cox thing. Um... I hope he realizes. I hope he does. I hope he's not too far above that he forgets how it impacts people when these things go along. And I hope the cuts were absolutely necessary to make things more streamlined and, and better for everyone and stabilize pricing. I don't think it will, but that's just because I'm at that cynical point right now. I'm hoping I'm wrong. But when you've got stock options and bonuses and millions of dollars a year, most people are pretty self-serving and they kind of forget where they came from and who got them there. And I, I just think that's never good. You never can forget where you were. I remember when I had 10 subs. And if I don't forget that, somebody sent me some really rotten nachos and cheese and just say, Mom's going to eat Guys, have a great day. Thanks for stopping by the channel. You made it to the end of the Ramble Jamble now. I know that for yourselves. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
a very garbage, a very bad year in the collective art world, the CCG world. Mountain! Oh man, I may have a very bad opening here. There we go. Once again, start the video on a nice two hundred. Oh, here we go. Good. Poster foil Wolverine Kalen. Boom! That's what we're talking about. Hey, it's not serialized. Oh my God, the price of these serialized one rings are in the thousands. Hey, you know what? Rudy and the Goat, we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it. We need the blue. We need the blue. We need the blue. Okay, how do I do this? Uh, do I do this right here first? I thought we had another box open with a patron. Where the first box we did on the left there, we have the, wasn't the very first card a foil one ring poster? It, hey, Nazzy G, Nazzy G coming in hot with the Nazgul. Like, wait a minute, didn't we actually have it happen? We a little deja vu here. Right, Miss Charger. And, uh, Miss Marauda and the Elvish Harbinger. I swear we had another case we opened in the first box on the left. The first poster with a foil one ring. Can anybody confirm that in the comments below? Like, didn't we do that? I swear that happens. Maybe I'm thinking of a different box, or maybe Doctor Who, but I swear that was a thing. Baggins and Seasons pass there. Well, that's the same. One good hit like that, man. Essentially now, we're playing on the house's money on this. That pretty much pays for the first box. And now we're going for some goodies. Hopefully we get a bunch more. So Orcus Bowmasters with a $31.69 cent bill. Nazi Boot, Nazi G, Orcus B. Coming Good game. Okay. okay, this is uh, Inga and Essica. Let's go look at the stats real quick. Um, uh, 38 lands, 36 green, 29 blue. It's uh, <clears throat> I think it's considered historic brawl. Historic brawl. Um, so let's go look at the cards real quick. Uh, an RP you can't refuse. Car uh, counter spell. Wizard class for, I don't want to, discarding cards and draw cards. Brainstorm, draw cards, off, oh, draw cards, Spectre Sailor. It's kind of a, it's a, you know, with Inga and Eska, it's a mana source, but you can draw cards, but it's flying, it's flash, it's got, it's very flexible. Uh, Boreal, Arboreal, uh, Grazer, just a mana dork in this deck, and plus I get to lay out an additional land if I have it. Sin Up Scout, lets me explore, uh, Elvis Mystic. One of our elves, these, you know, I'm basically kind of redundant, but if something happens to Inganesca, they still give me mana. Mischievous Catgeist, card draw, Cyclonic Rift, Walk Board, Ledger Shredder, lets me get through my deck a little quicker, Reality Chip, I want to see what's going on on the top uh, card of my deck. Plus, I can play lands and cast spells in the library if it is reconfigured. Um, uh, Armored Scrap Gorger, lets me exile stuff, plus it gives me one mana of any color, Rogue Intervention, Protection. Elysian created, created, uh, mana dork, mana dork, mana dork, mana dork plus a little reach and, and death touch, uh, mana dork or a land if I need it. Sus is now uh, two creatures fight or encounter target non creature spell plus they pay three, which is usually pretty good. Uh, Gretchen Tichwillow, card draw. I love this card. I love this card. Uh, Growth spiral. Just draw a card, put land down. Just mana dork. It has flying as well. Same thing. Brazen bar over it. Let's be bounce something. And, uh, yeah. Imprison the moon. Takes care of it. If they don't have anything, get rid of enchantments. I can take the commander and they're pretty much toast. Uh, intruder alarm. Every time I play a creature or a creature enters the battlefield, I untap all my creatures. I untap all creatures on the board, which to me doesn't really matter. Even if I untap their stuff, then I don't care. Because my stuff has um, vigilance. Uh, the Nadir Kraken just lets me generate tokens and makes that really big whenever I draw a card, which I do draw a lot of cards in this deck. Uh, Unctus, a grand Meditech. Every time a blue creature becomes tapped, draw a card and discard a card. Um, I don't really have the artifact thing going on. Um, I do have blue creatures. Vesuvian Drifter. Let's be look at the top card of my library, and if it's a big creature, it becomes a copy of that during combat. Um, Augur of Autumn. I can just look at the top card of my library. I play Lance, top card of my library. If I have three or more creatures with different powers, I can cast creature spells on top of my library. It's very flexible. I like it a lot. Plus, she just looks really devious. Uh, Circle of Dreams Druid. 
get one green for every creature you control. It's a very creature heavy deck. Uh, Death Bloom, Death Touch plus Mana Dork. Um, this mana fixes plus I can play an additional land on each of my turns. Uh, this Mana Dork, I can draw a card, Return of the Wilds. I can look for a, uh, search for a land plus make a one one human creature. I never do the food token thing. I don't. I don't I'm not a food token thing guy. Not in this deck anyway. Um, this is just uh, a mana dork block, a chump blocker, but it gets me mana. A Sylvan Awakening. Each of my lands become 2-2 two, two elemental creatures, and if I have a Truder Alarm, this is huge. I can tap all my stuff, laying stuff down, you know, drawing cards, untapping everything, just keep doing it. This is this with the Truder Alarm and uh, a card draw engine going is devastating. <clears throat> Clever impersonator lets me copy anything, any non-land non -land permanent on the battlefield. Mirror Hall Mimic gets me a creature. When it's destroyed, I can cast it uh, for its disturbed cost, and every round I start making copies. Sticking this on Cavalier of Gales is huge. Teferi's Aegis Insight. If you draw a card outside of your uh, draw phase at the very beginning of your turn. You draw two cards instead. It's crazy. If you draw, if you're supposed to draw three cards with Cavalier of Gales. You draw six cards. Arasta, it's just if they cast this resource free, I create a one-two green spider creature token with reach. You know, um, Beast Whisperer, I cast a spell, draw a card. Creeping Mold, destroy target artifact and channel land. Uh, this card, I've thought about losing something else. Um, everybody knows what this card does. It's indestructible. Devotion to green. Creature spells cost one less. That is nice, but I don't really need it. If I can reveal the top card of my library, if it's a creature, put it in my hand. Otherwise, I put it in my graveyard. It's kind of just getting me through my deck a little quicker, but I, don't, but I rarely do it. Toski, when a creature I <laughs> control deals damage to a player, I draw a card. It's cra crazy. Um, Rush me, Eternity's Crafter. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. You may cast it without paying its mana cost if it's lesser mana value. If you don't cast it, you can put it in your hand. Cavalier Gales, cast it, draw three cards. You really can't get rid of it unless you get exile it. Mind Flare, capture something else about the other player. Sludge Monster, when it comes into play or attacks, put a sludge counter on target creature. It becomes a 2 2, loses all abilities. Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Man, this card right here. If you're drawing a bunch of cards, Target opponent chooses the, its its ultimate. Target opponent chooses a permanent. They control and returns it to their owner hand. And this shuffles everything else in their library. Game's over. Cavalier of Thorns. Uh, when it comes to the battlefield, put the top card, five cards your library, put a land card from on them, among them onto the battlefield. Rest in your graveyard. When it dies, you may exile it. If you do, put another target card from your graveyard on top of your library. You don't have to exile it, but I do. Elder get Gargoth. 3-3 three, three beast token creature. Gain 3 life, draw a card. Whenever it attacks or blocks. It has Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. It's nice. Oh, dude. Okay. Uh, Silverback Gorilla. This is for enchantment and artifact destruction. Uh, life gain, and I can look for a land card and put on the battlefield. Unnatural Growth. Dealt the toughness and power during combat of all my creatures. Form Collects. You know what it does. It's, yeah, it's ramp. It's bringing things back. Um, it's putting uh, plus one plus one counters on stuff. Um, it could, it causes creatures to fight each other. It just does a lot of things. The temporal anchor. Getting your upkeep, you scry two. Always put them on the bottom. You always put them on the bottom. Unless somebody's, if you, whenever you, you know, exile something, it goes away. Unless somebody else has got something out there to prevent you from doing this, you always do this. And then you draw your card, and then those two cards that you scryed away, you can play them that turn. So basically you're drawing three cards a turn. Cold Breaker Horror, you cast a spell, you bounce target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Nothing more to say. It's devastating. Born to Voice of Hunger, whenever they tap a mana, it gets locked down. Doesn't untap in the next untap step. All my mana produces one additional. And the Great Hinge. Tap it. Two green. Gain two life. 
whenever a non-token creature in the battlefield under your control, put plus plus one on it and draw a card. And a bunch of lands. 